Parler just sued Amazon. If you don't understand how insanely, massively significant the current power grab by tech giants is, it's probably because they've spent years conditioning you to focus on other things. Don't pay attention to the fact that we're seizing more power over what people are allowed to say than anyone else in history has ever had. Instead, focus on something else that we want you to focus on to keep you distracted. Oh look, some racists. There are some racists over there. Those racists will destroy the world if you don't spend every waking moment obsessing over them. So just ignore what we're doing and focus on the real problem, the racists. Of course, if you want total control over what people can say, you have to crush the competition. This is a graph of Parler's internet traffic ranking over the past 90 days. Notice three things. One, there's consistent growth. If you're Twitter, you don't like that. Second, there's a surge in new users here. Parler is not a conservative platform, but this is when a ton of conservatives announced that they were moving to Parler because they were fed up with Twitter's policies. Third, an even bigger surge of conservatives was just beginning when Google, Apple, and Amazon all agreed to pull the plug. Parler's platform was hosted by Amazon Web Services. Amazon shut the site down last night at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you go to parlor.com now, you'll see this. Now, it's pretty obvious what just happened. That was an assassination in broad daylight. What can Parler do about it? I'm not sure, but a good place to start is with a lawsuit. Let's read a little of Parler LLC versus Amazon Web Services, Inc. 1. This is a civil action for injunctive relief, including a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunctive relief and damages. Last month, defendant Amazon Web Services, Inc. and the popular social media platform Twitter signed a multi-year deal so that Amazon Web Services could support the daily delivery of millions of tweets. Amazon Web Services currently provides that same service to Parler, a conservative microblogging alternative and competitor to Twitter. Interesting. So Amazon, which had a deal with Parler, had an even bigger deal with the much larger platform Twitter, which obviously doesn't want any competition. And Amazon shut down Parler. Nothing suspicious going on here. Two, when Twitter announced two evenings ago that it was permanently banning President Trump from its platform, conservative users began to flee Twitter en masse for Parler. The exodus was so large that the next day, yesterday, Parler became the number one free app downloaded from Apple's App Store. We already saw from the traffic ranking that Parler was blowing up. Not surprisingly, the app was blowing up as well. 3. Yet last evening, Amazon Web Services announced that it would suspend Parler's account effective Sunday, January 10th at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and it stated the reason for the suspension was that Amazon Web Services was not confident Parler could properly police its platform regarding content that encourages or incites violence against others. However, Friday night, one of the top trending tweets on Twitter was Hang Mike Pence. But Amazon Web Services has no plans, nor has it made any threats, to suspend Twitter's account. I'll have more to say about selective rule enforcement in a future video. I'll just point out here the insane degree of hypocrisy. How many times over the past decade have I posted screenshots of death threats from keyboard jihadis? Those keyboard jihadis were posting those threats on YouTube. No one would ever say that YouTube should be taken down because people post threats in the comments section. 
But that was somehow the justification for taking down Parler. Oh, there are users on Parler who are posting violent threats. The only solution is to take down the site. These platforms and service providers all enforce their policies selectively, based on whether they agree with your views or not. Four, Amazon Web Services' decision to effectively terminate Parler's account is apparently motivated by political animus. It is also apparently designed to reduce competition in the microblogging services market to the benefit of Twitter. Five, thus Amazon Web Services is violating Section 1 of the Sherman Antitrust Act in combination with defendant Twitter. Amazon Web Services is also breaching its contract with Parler, which requires Amazon Web Services to provide Parler with a 30-day notice before terminating service, rather than the less than 30-hour notice Amazon Web Services actually provided. Wow, if Amazon's contract said that they would provide a 30-day notice of termination and they only gave a day's notice, Amazon might be in trouble here. Finally, Amazon Web Services is committing intentional interference with prospective economic advantage given the millions of users expected to sign up in the near future. 6. This emergency suit seeks a temporary restraining order against defendant Amazon Web Services to prevent it from shutting down Parler's account at the end of today. Doing so is the equivalent of pulling the plug on a hospital patient on life support. It will kill Parler's business at the very time it is set to skyrocket. All right, so there are a few accusations here. There's the claim that Amazon violated the Sherman Antitrust Act. Antitrust laws are basically laws against unfair business practices that eliminate competition. If customers go to you because you have a good product at a fair price, and your competitors go out of business because their product isn't as good or their price is too high, you're fine. But if customers go to you because you've eliminated the competition by getting dirty, you can be sued. Now, Amazon is going to say, look, we only shut the site down because it violated our policies. But the timing here is pretty convenient, isn't it? Amazon also works with Twitter, and it just shut down Parler just as Parler was about to get millions of new users and become a serious threat to Twitter. Then there's Amazon's contractual obligation to give Parler a 30-day notice of termination. If Amazon violated its own contract and shut Parler down with only a day's notice when they were required to give 30 days notice, it's clear that the company was in a rush for some reason. What reason could that be? It couldn't be that Parler was about to get millions of new users and that if Amazon gave them 30 days notice, they would have time to transition to another service provider and keep the momentum going, could it? Finally, there's the claim that Amazon's interference just cost Parler millions of new users because if people are leaving Twitter and looking for another platform and Parler is down because Amazon took it down, those people are going to go to Gab or somewhere else. So even if Parler finds another hosting service and the platform is back up in a few days, the damage may already be done. If this damage is the result of Amazon not giving the 30 days notice it was required to give, Amazon would be responsible for the damage. So that's the latest in the Tech Tyrants campaign for complete control over the human mind. I don't think the tech tyrants will face any serious resistance from Congress or the Senate or the President for the next few years, but they could face some problems in the courts. They'll probably have to deal with a bunch of antitrust lawsuits until they become so powerful that their trust and safety teams take over the courts. Lawsuits are a small price to pay, however, because conquering the world has never been easy.